a musical metal working job. Simple jobs are not always easy to do. I use this mixer in the band that are playing. I'm the keyboard player and I use three keyboards, so this small mixer is ideal to have right at the side of me mounted on a stand. And this is a stand I'm going to use, it's a really good quality video lighting stand. First of all, I'm going to carefully turn the mixer upside down on the bench because I need to know what the width is between the two mounting holes in the base of the mixer. Here's a good tip. An easy way to find out the distance between centres is to use a digital caliper like I'm doing here. But I also use a ruler. I'm taking no chances. It's always a good idea to measure twice and cut once, or in this case, measure twice and drill the holes in the right place once. The next part of the job is to use some marking out blue, kindly sent to me by a man called Norman, to put a blue line down the centre of the bar. And then, after the marking out blue had dried, I used the right angled end of the scriber to mark the positions for the holes. As you can see in this clip, first of all, I marked the centre point, and I got it wrong originally, I don't know what I was doing, it's too hot. We've had a terrible summer so far, it's been raining most of the time and quite cold, and then suddenly it's really warm. And I'm far too fat and hairy for a climate like this. Once I've scribed all the lines, it's time for a centre punch. This is a spring-loaded centre punch. What I do need to do, though, is punch the centre marks a few times in the same place to make them deeper, and this will act as a guide for the point of the drill. By using the punch several times, I have quite a deep impression exactly where the lines cross. But before drilling the holes, it's a good idea to measure just one more time. I need to drill a hole in the centre and thread it, and I need to drill another two holes which are clearance size for M5 bolts. First of all, I check the diameter of an M5 bolt. I'm ignoring the readings on the micrometer, it's not important. All I need to do is make sure that the twist drill that I'm going to use to drill the holes is larger than the M5 bolt. Over to the drilling machine now and it's time to drill the holes, and here's another top tip. This drill size is smaller than the one I'm finally going to use, and I thought I would use this small drill first, and just in case I drill the holes in the wrong place, I can then use a needle file to open up the holes into the correct place before drilling them the size that I want them to clear the M5 bolts. This entire job is very simple, quite rudimentary. I've included it as a video though, because this kind of a job is something that you will come across very frequently when you're making mounting brackets for steam engines, cylinder mounting brackets, etc, etc. You don't have a sound mixer in the equation, but the mechanical principles are identical for measuring, marking out and drilling holes in pieces of metal. And believe it or not, drilling two holes in a piece of metal to align with two holes in another piece of metal doesn't always go the way that you would like it to. Now that I can see that the first holes are drilled perfectly on the cross scratches on the marking out blue, I'm going through with a clearance drill for the M5 bolt. I'm drilling the centre hole 7 seconds of an inch in diameter, and I'm going to use a quarter Whitworth tap to thread the hole, because that's the thread on top of the stand. Quarter Whitworth is usually the thread that screws into the video camera too. And why is the drill making such a horrible noise? Well, the drill bit is very blunt. It's vibrating badly and it's even moving the position of the machine vise. Time to fit the component to the mixer. And it's just plain sailing, all the holes line up. The two M5 Allen cap head bolts screw perfectly into the holes in the base of the mixer. And you can see the thread in the centre. I didn't show the threading process because I forgot to press record. I do that now and again especially when it's as hot as this in the workshop. Here's a close-up shot where I'm testing that the thread on the video light stand screws into the quarter width with mounting hole in the bracket. And not unsurprisingly, it screws into position perfectly. I'll take this to the band rehearsal on Thursday, where we'll conveniently set it up at the left-hand side of my keyboard setup, then I'll be able to control the levels independently of each of the three keyboards. As you can see from this clip, it's fully adjustable for any position. Even if I was stood up, I could lift it up a bit higher. Generally speaking, I like Yamaha equipment. This is very much bottom of the range. My TF5 mixer in the studio is quite different to this, and much bigger. And definitely not bottom of the range. Why do I play in a band at my age? Well, I am a musician, so it seems a logical thing to do, and we raise money for charity. Our band goes by the name of Mad Dogs and Yorkshiremen, and here's the logo. And here's my current keyboard setup. 
That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.